Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on this uh, CSN 2020 mathematics. Today we will discuss the questions related to the sequence and series with some shortcut tricks. So we will discuss these questions are there. First one is related to convergent, absolute convergent and so on. Second one is again related to the convergent or not based on the subsequence and the other pairs. And the last one is whether it's a uniformly convergent or not. How you can solve these questions and the concept behind that we will see here. So how you can solve this? All of you know that whenever there is a sequence, whenever there is a series of this form, we always apply the Leibniz test rule. What is that? It, it should be the monotony decreasing. It should be the greater than or equal to zero. And it goes to the zero as n approaches infinity. Then it is always be a convergent. You can see one by root of the n. It is a monotonic decreasing because it's the derivative is negative. It is always be a greater than zero and it goes to the zero as n approaches infinity. So the by Leibniz test, this is the correct option. Look at about this one. This is the absolute convergent. So it means you have to take a take the modulus sign. So what is the modulus sign are there? If I consider after the modulus sign, this is my here. Now you can do the comparison test. I can consider the V of n is my here. Then you can take the ratio and you can see this number is my goes to the infinity. So it means the nature of this will depend on the here. But you can see this value is uh, divergent by the P test. What is the P test is whenever whenever P is less than or equal to one, it's a divergent and if whenever it's a greater than it's a convergent. So this option is discard. Look about this third case. Now I can take as a separate, but I can write this of here plus log of n upon n raised to power three by two. Now I can take as a summation on both sides. So this is one by n, this is minus one by this, and this is log of n upon here. Now when it will be the convergent, if all of them will be convergent, but clearly sees that this is a divergent by using again here. It means this series is not be a convergent. Look about the last case. Again, I can take it as a separate. So it is minus one raised to power n upon n plus summation one upon n raised to power three by two. So this series is again convergent by using the Leibniz test. This series is convergent by the P test. The sum of the two convergent series is convergent. So the right answer is my A and D. Look at the another one is there. So what is that? Which of the following statement is true? So consider sequence of the real numbers. Whether the sequence is convergent or divergent, are they mentioning in that? No. So it means you can consider any of the sequence. Okay. So what is the most easiest sequence are there? You can consider the sequence as a constant. That is the most one of the most easiest way. So you can consider a of n is my one. So if you substitute here again, this is minus one raised to power n. So you have to apply the Leibniz test. What is the value of this? If you consider a n is my one. So this is one upon two. Is it convergent? No. Why? Because the third property that is my here limit n approaches infinity will not go to the zero. Also, it is not a decreasing. It means this option is cancelled out. You have to think about the subsequence. All of you know, all of us knows that a sequence has its own subsequence. So it means if you consider this as n of k is again as a one, what will the value of this? If you substitute here, what is that? This is my one upon two. Is it convergent? No, because it go it doesn't goes to the zero. It means this option is also discard. Look at there. There is a number b such that this will is the convergent. Again. How you can solve that? If you consider a n is one, then what will happen? This this is my b minus one upon two minus one raised to power n. Is it goes to the zero? Is it goes to the zero for b is my half only? But there is a number b. Is it true for all the sequence? This is only one sequence. So what we can do? We will try to discard the option. So if I consider the sequence as minus one raised to power n, what will happen? This is minus one raised to power n. What is the modulus sign of this is one? One plus one is two. Is it always goes to the zero? No. Why? Because if n is my even, then b. If I consider b as a half and n is my even, then it goes to the zero. Otherwise, if I consider n is my odd, and then it will goes to the zero only when b is my minus half. It means there. Uh, it means it is not always true. It goes to the zero as a convergence. So this option is also discard. There is a number B and the subsequence for which this is modulus is true. So I consider again as of this, 
if I substitute this value b minus minus 1 raised to power n upon 2 the modulus of this so what is that is it goes such that this converges b so is there any b yes you can easily do that uh, there there is a modulus sign out there so you can consider b as of half minus 1 is n is odd so modulus sign is always be the positive value so if you consider b is here it will always goes to the 0 so there exists a number b that is the b is half and a of n okay this is a subsequence so the, i can consider the subsequence as of only plus 1 there is a subsequence of this so it, either as a 1 minus 1 1 so i can consider subsequence as of plus 1 only then this number b minus half if i consider b as half it will go to the 0 so i can consider here if you consider a subsequence as of minus 1 then you can consider b as of minus half then again there exists a b such that this converges so the right answer is only d look at the uh, next questions are there so it is talking about the uniformly convergent so whenever there is a uniform con convergent there are the two tests are there one is the Dirichlet second is the able so Dirichlet test we can apply here that's the uh, easiest way so what is the Dirichlet test is you have the product of the two sequence the first sequence that is considered the u of n what is the property of the u n is it should be uh, uniformly bounded this is the first property second one is uh, this uh, v of n it converges to the zero that is a monotonically decreasing sequence and goes to the zero then you can say this converges uniformly so it means you have to consider the two u and v from here so what you, you have to consider the bounded so since sign of is always be bounded so i consider this as of here is it a bounded you can see that mode of the u n is mod of this is always be less than of 1 it means this is a bounded now you have to think about the monotonic decreasing sequence so if i consider v of n is my here now what is that uh, this is a n so if i consider this p as of here what is that so it means so if i prove that it will be a, a convergent to 0 it means i have to prove that p should be greater than of the 1 so that's again very simple we all know that whenever n is greater than or equal to 10 what is the value of this is always be greater than 1 so what is the meaning of that n raised to power this that is nothing but my p so n raised to power p that's a p is greater than 1 so this is always be a convergent that is v of series v of n is 1 upon n raised to power p is convergent for all n is greater than 10 but since the summations are varies from the uh, 0 1 to infinity so i have considered uh, greater than 10 is fine so it means this up to here is a convergent what are the previous values are there that is 9 8 7 and up to here 1 so what is that if n is 1 so what is the value of vn is 1 upon here what is that 2 is 1 upon 2 log of e2 these are my finite value this is finite value this is finite value up to the 9 these are my finite values so this is the convergent this is also the convergent so all are my finite and the convergent series are there so it means is a convergent to 0 you can easily see that this is a monotonic decreasing sequence so this property also satisfied it means this is convergent for all the x belongs to the R. So the right answer of this problem is my D is there. So this is the way you can solve these questions in a very simple manner. We will see some more questions in our next class. Till then, best of luck. Thank you very much.